Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Have you ever wondered how much money you can spend by building only on a single tile? I know that large Tivoli rollback has, so I decided to find out the answer. One thing before we start. When I'm talking about height in this video, I will be using units instead of meters or feet, because I think it's easier to deal with. One unit is 1.5 meters or 5 feet. You got that? Ok, here we go. The most expensive coaster track piece that is only one tile large is the photo section of the multi-dimension coaster, which has a base cost of 270 euros. If we stack these from the ground level to the support limit of the multi-dimensional coaster, we end up with 13 track pieces, which in total cost 4098 euros. This is more than simply 270 times 13 because of the support costs for the pieces that are higher up. Above this we can continue with Giga Coaster track pieces as it has a much higher support limit. Even though the base cost of the photo section is twice that of the second most expensive track piece, we will not be using it here. The photo section requires 3 units of clearance instead of the station's 2. Because of this, we can place 3 station pieces for every 2 photo sections, meaning that we pay for the support costs more often. At the height we're building at, this more than makes up for the lower base cost. If we build Giga Coaster station pieces above the multi-dimension coaster photo sections all the way to the support height of the Giga Coaster, we end up with a cost of 9990 euros. We're not quite done yet, as there are two coaster types that have no support limit, which are the Air Powers Vertical Coaster and the Reverse Freefall Coaster. Their station pieces both cost 150 euros, which is more expensive than the Giga Coaster. However, these coaster types do not have any support costs, which is why we only use them at heights that no other coaster can achieve to complete the tower all the way to the height limit of the game. So, this is our completed tower. We start at the minimum possible height of minus 6 units, with 13 multidimensional coaster photo sections. Then there are 24 Giga Coaster station pieces, and on top of that there are 19 air powered vertical coaster station pieces, which takes us to the height limit of the game at 117 units. This has a total cost of 12,840 euros. That is quite a lot of money to spend on just one tile and it is quite near the maximum that you can do with just rides. However, it's not even close to the most expensive tile possible. For this we need to include scenery and more importantly we need to take a look at path. The right tower showed us how important support costs are and paths have the highest support cost in the entire game. For every unit that you go up you pay 5 euros in support costs which is double that of the giga and multidimension coasters. Not only does Path have a very high support cost, it also doesn't have a support limit, meaning that we can get extremely high support costs near the top of the map. The base cost of Path is only 12 euros, but at 117 units up we pay a massive 615 euros in support costs. Because of this, a tower of just path pieces is already about 50% more expensive than the tower of ride pieces at 19,964 euros. The nice thing about path is that you can build more things on top of it. There are a lot of different path ornaments and most of them are very cheap. A few of them are a bit more expensive, with the most expensive one being the jumping snowballs at 25 euros. In addition to that we can also fit 4 signs on a single piece of path, and this is a big one. You do this by building a cross of path, building 4 inward facing signs and then deleting all the path except the piece in the middle. 
even though there is no path on the other side anymore, the sign will stay. The basic sign costs 25 euros, while all the themed ones cost 30 euros. This adds another 120 euros to the base cost of a path piece, for a total of 157 euros. Once again, this is a lot, but at lower heights we can still do better. Introducing the tiny cogwheel, which is a neat little scenery item that has the smallest size possible. With a cost of 15 euros, this is the most expensive tiny scenery item in the game. In the space of one path piece, we can fit 16 of these tiny cogwheels for a total of 240 euros, which is quite a bit more than 157 of the path. Unfortunately, scenery doesn't have a support cost, so at 17 units above the ground, the path becomes more expensive again. Now we're almost done, but there is still one thing that's missing. Walls. Both cogwheels and path allow for walls to be placed on the same tile, and since scenery has no support limit, we can build those walls all the way to the height limit of the game. The doorway is a very expensive wall at 25 euros, but we can do better. Once again, we need to look at the smallest items, as they are usually the most expensive for their size. The lowest glass wall is a quarter of the height of the doorway, but with 7 euros it is slightly more than a quarter of the price. Building these walls all the way up adds another 56 euros per unit. Now we're ready to build our final tower. We start at the minimum height of minus 6 units with the tiny cogwheels. Once we reach a height of 11 units, we switch to the path pieces with jumping snowballs and roman signs and build it all the way to the height limit of 117 units. Lastly, we add tiny glass walls all around the entire tower. This has a total cost of 36,362 euros, which is the most that you can spend on a single tile. As a comparison, this is more expensive than the Goliath and El Condor from Six Flags Holland combined, all on just one single tile. I really enjoyed messing around with different things to figure out the answer to this question, so if you have any more challenges like this, please leave them in the comments below. If you liked this video, consider giving it a like. You can also subscribe or follow me on Twitch. Thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next video.